Hi everybody. Hey guys. Brought to you by Hobbling Japan. Now Hobbling Japan sells a bunch of stuff related to games, Ryan. Yes, we do. And we figured, hey, why not use that as a as a reason to get our butts down here at the Tokyo Game Show? As you all know, we love games. Yeah, so. we love games. So <laughs> we thought we can mix these two. We're gonna look around, see what we can see involving games, but also stuff that we are involved with, yes. different products and games and models. And we're gonna try and bring it these kind of games to you from a different angle. And we've got a sale on, on okay. game items. On so game check items. out it's it's Yeah. All right, let's let's check it out. All right, I'm here at the Bandai Namco Games booth, and with me is Ollie. Now he's a game developer in Tokyo, and uh, he's also a contributor to the Hobby Link TV blog. So he knows his stuff, and that's why we wanted to bring him along here. Now. We want to talk about Gundam Breakers. Now, Ollie, what can you tell us about Gundam Breakers 2? Yeah, Gundam Breakers 2. Now, this is a sequel to uh, Gundam Breaker that was released last year on PS3 and PS yep. Vita. Uh, it's kind of similar to the Dynasty Warriors games, but the whole premise of it is that you are uh, you beat up other model kits, yep. and all the model kits drop their bits, and then you build Franken Gundams from yep. all the other bits to make the most powerful Gundam. Yep. Um, it's very, it, was, it did quite well, um, yep. and so now we're actually seeing a PS3 sequel yep. uh, being shown at the show today. Now, as long as Gundam models have been around, people have been doing Kit Bash, which is taking parts from different models, and I guess uh, maybe Bandai saw how popular that had become, and it started uh, this idea of making a game with that purpose. Yeah. So it seems like uh, the game world and the Gundam model world are kind of uh, interlocking. Oh, absolutely. In so I mean, ways. what's really interesting about Gundam Breaker is you actually have the three scales: the 144, 100, yeah. and 160. Yeah. And the 144 is what you play as, yeah. and then you go up against 100s, and then the bosses are the 1 to 160 yeah. perfect grades. Yeah. And that's really cool. Yeah. So. And now, if you go to just like the Shizuoka model show or the uh, All Japan model show. Even though there's no games being displayed there, you'll see the Gundam Breaker stuff there. Mm. All right, we're still at Bandai Namco, and we managed to get a little closer to Gundam Breakers too. We're not supposed to actually, you know, focus on the game where we're filming, but we can have it in the background. So that's what we're doing. And uh, what I'm seeing, Ollie, is that. Uh, they have a new level, it's the Gundam Cafe or something like that? Yes, no, one of the new levels for Gundam Breaker 2 is actually the Gundam Cafe. Gundam Cafe. Um, and from the previous game, they actually had it, uh, you know, when you were in model kit shops yep. and stuff with all the model kit boxes, yep. as well as actual areas from the classic Gundam as well. Oh, so yes. it seems to be a mixture of like what we know as classic Gundam, but also the uh, bring in the idea that you're, you're still a model kit. Exactly, exactly. Okay, sounds good. But no, yeah. Sorry, and you also saw the fact that they've got league boss fights going on. Yeah. So, you know, big you saw fights. the big uh, going up against like the big 1 to 160 Gundam, yeah, like RX-78, and then yeah. the uh, Sinanju as well. Yeah. I mean, but normally the game is you go up against hordes of enemies. It's a bit like Dynasty Warriors. Oh, okay. But so like, you, game. Yeah, yeah. You also yeah. commented on when, when uh, one of the Gundams got blown up yeah. and the arm came off. I saw the unicorn's arm go flying. A yeah. special animation you see it goes shooting off in the distance. And he managed to get it back. Yeah, well that's yeah. one of the key things is that you can lose parts in game and yeah. then if you, you have to get them back in order to get your weapons uh, okay. back. So they've still All retained right. that, which is really cool. Yeah, well as a Gundam modeler, I know how frustrating it is to lose parts. <laughs> so it's good that they can get them back. Yeah. All right, here's uh, Batman and Robin, unlike we may have seen them before. These are the, the timeless steampunk Batman and Wild West Robin, of course. Uh, like I said, Square Enix always does really good sculpts, and you can you can see it on these things. And these figures are huge. All right, here's uh, here's our good friend. Well, maybe not Darth Vader, and uh, it's Play Arts Kai. So it might not stick to the script as we know it in many of the many of the movies, but we have a, a mean-looking Darth Vader right here. All right, here's a Titanfall mech. It's the Atlas, and uh, Titanfall was a really, really, really popular game when it came out. A little bit different from what people had experienced before with the Call of Duties and whatnot. And uh, it still continues to be played quite a bit. And here's a classic. Now this is uh, the Master Chief, the Play Arts Kai, from Everybody Knows Halo. Uh, Halo 2, actually, the Anniversary Edition. All right, so we're looking at Gollum here. Gollum, Gollum. Uh, quite a bit different from my, what I'm used to seeing on all those movies I've watched, but. In this display case, we have a whole bunch of DC Comics uh, he heroes and villains. We got a Joker in here, and uh, they're looking they're looking really gorgeous, actually. Nice poses, really, really good coloring when it comes to all the all the painting on these figures. I like the Joker the best, I think. All right, now look what we got here. We have uh, from Square Enix Games. Look, we have uh, Sora and Roxas from Kingdom Hearts. Those just went up on uh, HLJ.com only a couple days ago. We just got uh, the info and we have the pictures and it's able to be ordered now. And uh, we have a lot of Final Fantasy characters in here. Looks like from um, Advent Children. 
you, you have Tifa and there's Titus, or sorry, uh, Cloud Strife. And uh, one I want to point out is one of my favorites over here is from Final Fantasy XII, that's Fran. And I don't know if you guys know this or not, but Final Fantasy XII is the best one in the series. Okay, this is the Bahamut, the Play Arts Kai Bahamut. He's a monster. Uh, they're, they're asking 25,000 yen for this guy, but you, you can see that it's just enormous and it's beautiful, lots of detail. And uh, you can pose it in a variety of ways, but I wouldn't play with it too much. It's more like a piece of art that's meant to sit in your home and you know, be a center of discussion, I think. Hi everybody, I'm Scott Hodge from Hobby Link Japan, here with Sid at the Very Loud Tokyo Game Show. That's right, it's loud because Godzilla is loud. Yeah, Godzilla is loud. Uh, we're here at the Bandai Namco booth right now, and they've got a whole bunch of stuff. You know, um, got to set up our street cred here. Yeah. I love video games too. I mean, you can't run a, a business like Hobby Link Japan these days yeah. and not have some some game stuff going uh, too, yeah, right? So, yeah. Uh, actually, back in the day, I did some translation work on games uh, okay. way back when. I did a game called Snatcher okay. uh, for Konami and that uh, Hideki Kojima guy. That was fun. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> was that just kind of like a one-off thing, or did you pursue? Any further uh, no, actually, I've done uh, the audio. Uh, I've been like audio director on some yeah. uh, air combat simulations, okay. and also on a couple of tank simulation, oh, nice. tank fighting uh, simulation games too. So I've had my spin in the in the game industry as well. Okay. These days, I don't get as much time as I'd want to to play yeah. games. I'm kind of stuck uh, halfway through Skyrim at the moment, uh, yeah. uh, and occasionally, uh, you know, dabble in an F1 simulator. Yeah, <laughs> How I, play about you? Of, I play a lot of Gran Turismo, and uh, I mostly am an FPS guy. Uh huh. But uh, after, you know, working where I work. Halo, Gears of War, yeah, all that. that. Yeah. Like, all the way back from Wolfenstein, okay. way back then. But, uh, you know, after, you know, working where I work now and seeing all the game-related merchandise coming in, I, <laughs> like, such, you know, I'm interested in the, the games for these right. characters as well, and I'm starting to become more interested in like the Gundam Breaker. Right. So, Godzilla. so you're not just interested in Gundam, which is I mean you're the Gundam yeah. guy, but the other big G as well. Oh yeah, yeah. Anything big that starts with G, <laughs> I think. Okay, I'll start. Here we are at the Zoids booth. This is Zoids. There's a Zoids game. Of course, we've shown Zoids on Gundam TV before. Now we're actually getting a chance to see this game. I don't exactly know yet what it's supposed to be. You know, is it a platformer? Is it action? But you can see that with four players, they're kind of racing each other. I think they're meant to, you know, destroy things in their in their path, as well as get to the uh, the goal line before anybody else. Not knowing as much about Zoids as I do about Gundam, I can't say you know which characters they're using or not. Oh, we got a mission failed up there. Somebody didn't do so good. And now somebody's playing the boss there. If you look in the, the bottom corner, we have a boss. We have, do have boss fights, but it seems to be a little bit of a racing game slash button master slash. You know what? I'm not quite sure here. They have five seconds left though. I hope somebody can pull this off. Two, one, zero. Hi everybody, it's Scott again. We're still at the Bandai Namco booth here at the Tokyo Game Show. And now we're standing in front of the booth for Tales of Zestiria, which is the latest entry in the Tales of series of games. And that means, folks, that it's a perfect opportunity for me to introduce to you one of the newest members of the HLG team. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Lindsay. Hello, everyone. Nice to meet you. Lindsay has just joined our website team, and she actually comes to us from a company that was involved in the production of the Tales of Games, right? Yeah, that's right. I'm actually a huge Tales of fan. I've been playing this series for nearly 10 years. Uh -huh. and. Coming to HLJ was a great opportunity for me because I am a huge collector too. Okay, well don't don't abuse your employee discount, okay? But I'm sure you must be excited to see what the new features of the new game are. So let's yeah, go take let's a look. Check it out. So Lindsay, the, the Tales of series has been going on for a long time. I mean what, what defines it or what, what sets it apart from all the other RPGs out there? Well, stylistically, um, the Tales of series uses anime style characters. You can see in the official art or yeah. in the game characters. They have more anime style uh, faces, right. whereas uh, Final Fantasy uses more realistic Photo models. Photorealistic, yeah. And um, in regards to the battle system, the 
The Tales of series is very well known for having uh, these action battles rather than turn-based. They're real time. So do you, you actually have to uh, control the characters like a fighting game in the in the combat sequences? Correct. So uh, as you can see on the screen in front of us, uh, this gentleman on the left here is playing as the main character and he's just whacking the bad guy with his sword. Or it looks like a stick actually, but... <laughs> All right, All right, so uh, Lindsay now, she's actually going to get a shot at the uh, the new game here, and we'll see how it goes. Yes, I'm very excited. Tales of Zestiria is actually the 20th anniversary title. 20? Yeah, so it's been right running here. for quite some time. All right, let's jump right into battle. Now it looks like your team members are actually not inside your menu. I mean, inside your group here. Let's see. Is she following me around? Yeah. Well, look at that. That's looks like new. yeah, she's like a little uh, stray puppy there, just kind of <laughs> follow you wherever you go. That's a new feature, actually. Really? The previous games did not have the characters following so you around. So let's see. And uh, let's see, I got you a got dragon a dragon tail. tail. <laughs> Whatever a dragon tail is. Okay, there's an enemy. Let's go oh, kill oh, it. Oh, look out. Ah. Giant something. A squirrel attacking. All right. Let's... Wow. So your companions just are on sort of uh, AI. They're just fighting for you without direction, I That's guess. That's correct. And so in your group, like any RPG, you'll have uh, mages, healers. Uh -huh. And then you have these in-battle sequences where your right. characters talk with each other. You got a 3.32 score for that fight, by the way. I'm not sure I'm not if that's sure good if that's or good. not. Yeah. <laughs> Go get that, that owl or whatever that is. Is that supposed now, to kill that? Yeah. Now, there's some things I'm not sure about here. I've got a little oh, marker chasing you. on my... <laughs> You're in trouble, Lindsay. Ah! Ah! What right. happened? Oh, now we have more eagles. Oh dear, we got a bad camera angle here. Let's see if I have any arts, any jutsu. So right. you have special attacks then? Or, yes. or special powers you can do? So basically combination of X and the joystick will get me different moves like that. Well, something was big there. I don't know what that was, but it looked very effective. But uh, only a 2.59, I'm afraid, this time. Oh, this is great. <laughs> now, at the end of the game, you can use your grade to buy special, uh, well, special stuff, stuff for All your right. next playthrough. So, of course, we have a map, very standard there, so yes. you can see where you are, right? Oh, there's a giant octopus or something over there. Yeah, that's a little creepy, so I'm going to try to run to the next town and no, see if I can uh, make it somewhere. <laughs> I don't know, the, the land-based octopus is kind of a weird concept, isn't it? All right, let's kill it. Yeah. yeah, it looks like we can actually pull out our sword before going into battle, which is a new feature as well. Ooh, there's lots of octopi now. All right, let's kick its butt. Ooh, that was a tornado something you did there. Whatever it was, it looked really <laughs> impressive. All wow, right. that was fast. Only 14.26 seconds and a grade of 3.29. Let's see if we can pull up our map. No, we cannot. Okay, there we go. Wow. So here's our map. These are towns, but it doesn't look like we can actually go inside them. Right. So now when you so, get into full gameplay, once you get into the towns, you'll have story elements and interactions right. with other uh, characters and that sort of thing? Yes. And of course, you'll be able to break into everyone's houses and steal their stuff. Oh, that's I love doing that, yeah. <laughs> Just, you know, like I'm Link in the Zelda her. games, walking into yes. homes and smashing all the pottery to look for gold and arts. You know, I'm actually not <laughs> sure if we can do that in this game. I really? hope it's a new feature. All right, so let's see what happens if we hurt them before we go into battle. Well, they they vanished. They, they, they just <laughs> They cloaked or something there. It also looks like we can talk to this girl following us around. Melinda, let's go to Melinda, she Okay, says. so she basically gives you your objective. Right, so if you forget what you need to do, just ask your partner, they're always remembering. Let's see if we can choose who we are. You can mix around your team like this. Right. Oh, but apparently we can't mix her out. Um, 
There we go. So now I'm going to be fighting as a different character, even okay, though the but on you're, screen the one running is around is still the same character. But now right. in the fight, you'll be fighting. Oh, okay. So let's of course, see this how is still works. a test version, so we don't know if all the features are available. But right, and this is the first time that people have been able to play the game. Right. And I can't go over this. <laughs> okay, My so bad. that's. Uh... All right, there's something we can kill. All right. I can't hit it up there. Can we jump, I wonder? Nope. <laughs> okay, so now I'm this girl with the umbrella. You have an umbrella. What are you going to do with an umbrella? <laughs> She's a caster. Oh, so I, I see. So I won't actually be fighting. So fireballs or something. Oh, there, yeah, there we go. You iced them. All right. Awesome. Oh. Uh-oh. Now we have some monster attack there. Mystic art. Or Hyogi in Japanese. Right. And I'm not doing anything. There we go. So it looks like that's the cast time there. 3.67. That's your best score yet. You're getting better. You're learning. Five, <laughs> way. four, three, two. I don't know. Okay, here we are at the Sony booth, the PlayStation booth. Now, I'm excited because I actually have a PlayStation 4 now. Last year at this show, uh, the world had the PlayStation 4, but uh, Sony had not released it in Japan at the time. So we got to see the hardware through a glass display case, but right. there wasn't much we could do with it. This year, all the Japanese fans now have their PlayStation 4. So we're here to see the games like Destiny, Metal Gear Solid, Phantom Pain. There's a the Gundam Gate, there's the Order 1886, and whatever else has shown up on the screen. Lindsay, what are you excited about? Well, it's not on PlayStation 4, but I'm excited to see Kingdom Hearts HD Remaster 2.5. Yep. And uh, Persona 5's coming out. Yep, yeah, they so, have a video for that over there. We've only seen animation for the game this far, so yep. I'm excited to see some gameplay over there. Okay, well, let's go check it out. All right, well, Lindsay went off to find Persona 5, and uh, I ran into Ollie again. Now, Ollie, what are we uh, standing in front of here? This is Bloodborne. Uh, this is the next uh, sort of game, effectively, in the Soul series by From yep. Software. So, yep. And uh, I gotta say, that looks kind of scary. Yep. <laughs> no, no, I had a go on this earlier, and yeah, it's really, really good. Yeah. Um, I mean, well, the interesting thing that they've done, apart from they've like, sent it in like Gothic London, yeah. which is interesting for me because I'm British. Okay. Um, but the other main difference is the fact that they've got rid of the shield. Oh, okay. So, so it's uh, not so defensive type of game? Or? Yeah. You, you can't just rush into things. You've okay. got to be really careful. Uh, okay. So, I mean, I went into a group of four guys who went, yeah, I could take this dead. Uh, so, so maybe you got to be a little more, I guess, strategic about how you... Oh, yeah. I mean, they give you um, a gun and a sword, which allows you to kind of draw people away. Okay. Um, and the gun is normally to off, offset people, so yeah. to make them kind of, you know, go back a bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's 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 quite cool. They, if you play through the demo and complete the demo, yeah. you get a t-shirt. And I'm not seeing anyone wearing the t-shirt yet. <laughs> nice. so. Looks like it's going to be a bit of a challenge. Yeah. Yeah, it's typical Souls. Okay. Okay, here we are at the Square Enix booth. It's very loud right now, but uh, we just had to show you this footage from Final Fantasy 15. Now, in some ways, the art direction looks like a little bit of a throwback to like 7, but uh, when you can see by the character designs and the inclusion of vehicles and stuff like that, they're trying to make it like a little more modern. But I gotta say that the cutscenes look astounding, and the, it looks like the action and the fighting is gonna be like not so much turn based, but really, really button mash type action. And I'm excited. Like, look at those graphics. I'm a big Final Fantasy nut, and this uh, just uh, got me really, really excited. Okay, Sid. Yeah. What's going on? Uh, we're looking at Hardline right now. 
they actually have people able to play this uh, this game now. Last year it was Battlefield 4, this year it's Hardline. And uh, we have played the demo of this game, right Ryan? Yeah, I have played it, I wasn't super impressed. Yeah, well they're, apparently they're doing a lot of work with it. They decided yeah. that they're gonna completely change things. And uh, people seem to be not knowing that you have to push the R2 button to fire the gun, because <laughs> before that you had to push R1 for your trigger. These people... Is that console? That's yeah, they're uh, playing on, on the PlayStation 4. Uh, and this is the problem I had last year when I played Battlefield 4, is that they changed the control scheme, but they didn't actually let you know... I said, I'm which sorry, button. I have to interject. Yep. Console, what the, what the... You know, I was hoping... The keyboard in the mouth, I was hoping time. that they would have the PC version of this game, because that's what I play now mostly. But because we're in the land of Sony in Japan, they're using the PlayStation 4 for this. Oh, well, these guys suck. And look, yeah. I'm sorry, when I played the beta for this, yeah. it was like DLC for Battlefield 4. Yeah. I mean, this game looks sexy, but I don't know. They, yeah. they, they, they got to really work hard to turn me around. Well, like, it does appear to be kind play. of just nice, nice shot. It does appear to be kind of uh, an extension of Battlefield 4 instead of a new... Oh, that's terrible. You, you shoot the gun out, but then you get inside, or shoot the car, and then you get inside. It does seem to be kind of like a DLC. I do hope to see a lot of different changes just to make it a little more playable where Battlefield 4 wasn't. But I'm still kind of excited just because I'm a first person shooter guy. Well, you know, you and I will hope to get to COD today, but yeah. uh, this is kind of like a COD Battlefield version, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, oh yeah, they make the map smaller. Like and, crossover. The yeah. cars are way too easy to handle. Yeah. Um, but it does look damn it, good. It does look nice. And this is the PlayStation 4, Ryan. So you're looking at, you know, next generation console graphics and, and of course PC is going to look even nicer. Yeah, the one thing I, they didn't actually have destructible environments that much yeah. in this game, which I think is like a step down, but... Well, it's, it'll help frame rates, that's for sure, so you don't have to worry about, you know, that levolution moment killing your frame rate and everything yeah, else, which well, is what we experienced already. But I will give this game props, I did, from yeah. what I played, that yeah. they do force the action into yeah. a certain area, so it's yeah. real, yeah, it gets pretty exciting. Yeah. But yeah, 70 bucks, they're gonna have to work really hard. <laughs> well, that's why they delayed it. We're gonna see it next year instead of the end of this year. Well, I think so. they delayed it because COD's coming out and they're like, we don't stand a chance. Exactly, after all the, the problems they have with Battlefield 4, so. Well, let's, right. let's try to get onto COD. I think yeah, that's let's do it. I, I wanna play something, Ryan. Yeah. There's a thing going on, so I don't know. But that's maybe later. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're doing their stage show now. All right, now, uh, Lindsay is still looking for Persona 5. We haven't found it yet. Uh, Ollie's still here now. Uh, we're looking at the Earth Defense Force 4.1. So, yes. Ollie, can you explain a little bit about why it's 4.1? Yeah, okay, basically, uh, Earth Defense Force, or Chiki Borrego, started out on the PS2. It was, yep. a very, it was a budget title, which was only like 2,000 yen. Okay. Um, but it's very, very popular. He basically shot lots of giant alien ants in okay. tanks, and it was great fun. They had two games of that, and then they did a 360 game, and then they did a port of that to the PS3 and done a Vita game. This is actually a follow-on to the last PS3 game, which was Chicky Boy Gun yeah. or EDF4. Yeah. And this is going to be PlayStation 4 exclusive, uh, okay. and it's an expansion of that. And as you can see, the big giant robot behind us, yeah. you get to pilot that. And I was playing with that earlier, and I got to beat up, effectively, Godzilla, which is awesome. Okay. That's cool. So yeah, it's really cool. Now there's also a title coming out for Vita. For Vita? Yes. No, that's really cool. I mean, the second PlayStation 2 game was absolutely massive and really, really cool. And they've now ported that to PS Vita. Okay. And I was playing that, and that's really good. All right. Uh, so anybody who's interested in mechs, this is the biggest mech that we have at the show here. It's awesome. Yeah. Okay, and obviously the camera's not fixed, you're able to move it around. Yeah, I mean, they've got a special thing on it which basically when something big happens, uh, when something big happens, basically the camera moves to it. Oh, it locks on. Yeah, it locks on, shows you that this is actually important. Okay. You can turn that off though. Oh, okay. Um, but it's, it's, it's basically like a, you have two control methods. You have like a normal mode, which is kind of like auto aiming a bit on, yeah. and then you have the classic, you know, dual analog, yeah. first step motion. The mech is really slow, but it's really cool. Well, it gives you that sense that it's enormous, I think. Yeah. That's the great thing about these games, is because the origins were from some PS2 games called Gigantic Drive and Setsuji Nijiachi Go. Yeah. And that's all about controlling the 
the mecha from the ground with the yeah. right control. Yeah. So you had a real sense of scale, and it was really important. Yeah. So when you go up against all the giant ants, they yeah. kind of retain that scale. Oh, so when you yeah. kind of power up into this, this is this is first for the series. Yeah. This is actually goes back to the, the origins of where the series came from, which is actually really cool. Yeah. I'm so getting this. <laughs> and it's, what's really weird is that this is the PS4 game, and it's based on what was a PS3 game. Yeah. So. I mean, it's really weird because these were originally budget games, yeah. and now they're full price. So, yeah. So it's, <laughs> it's properly powerful. And of course, the PlayStation 4 has those lighting effects, right? Yeah, it's yeah. got lighting. The frame rate on this is a bit funny, but I think that's because it's a demo. Yeah. I mean, the PS4 is ridiculously powerful in terms of the amount of visual yeah. memory it's got. And basically, the reason you get frame rate dropouts is normally because of the fill rates or the, the textures on screen. Yeah. So lots of explosions normally produce problems with frame rate because you've got lots of textures. Yeah. So basically, with this new, you know, with the fact they've got so much memory on the PS4, yeah. most of the games we've been playing, the frame rate's beautiful all of them. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm hoping for this, it's going to be nice absolutely smooth. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Ryan. Sid. We're here again. And First person shooter. Call of Duty, Xbox One, yep. launching in Japan for the first time. That's right, I think the last game show they had hinted at the Xbox because Titanfall was on display. But the Xbox One actually being able to play it, this is the first time yeah, people are getting on it with various games. I'm excited to be honest. It's the only real first person shooter being released this holiday season. That's so I'm probably gonna you. get it. <laughs> but I'm um, five. I four. loved Modern Warfare and I love I was okay with Black Ops. This one looks intriguing to me because of what the changes they've made. So I'm hoping to get my hands on it. Well, I'm just gonna say like straight out, COD 4, Call of Duty 4 was the best one ever. And yeah. uh, anyone yeah. who wants to argue that point with me, please go ahead. Yeah. But I just feel that they've been going downhill since then. But I'm kind of excited for this one. Yeah. And uh, you know, Next soon generation. I will hopefully be able to jump on this. Yeah, yeah. On PC, right? Well, <laughs> if I have to use a damn controller, I will. Okay. Alright. Okay, Ryan. They wouldn't let us play. We, we lined up, like we went to the line, the, the line is very short, so we hopped in there. The guy sees us, looks at us, and then turns the sign around that yeah. says, we're finished for the day. So we're not showing you game footage. We're not yeah. interested in the Xbox. I've lost all interest in yeah. Xbox. Damn it. They, PS for life. I'm, I, I guess yeah. I'm not buying a new console this year. Yeah. Like, I'm a PlayStation Very disappointed guy. Microsoft. You had a chance, Xbox. You had a cut chance. Us off. Right, you won't believe it. We no. were right there. Yeah. They cut us off. 30 minutes left How in the show. How am I supposed to know I want to spend my yeah. money now? Yeah. Well, anyway, Sid and I had a okay. fantastic show. Except, except for, for these guys. Xbox. Microsoft. <laughs> Man. Anything else? No, it was fun. I don't TV? want to leave angry, though. Yeah, okay, let's talk about the next episode of Gumpla TV. Okay, next episode of Gumpla TV, we're going to bring the Nightingale on because it's finished. Okay. And we'll talk more about that for those people who watch the live event. You'll, you'll see the, the fully finished products, minus the, the markings. And we'll talk about just that line, the re 100 line, and what that means. Okay, exciting stuff. All right. And uh, that. yeah, please, you know, leave comments about the game show. We're yeah. interested to hear what people thought about it. Yeah. If we should come back again. Yeah. You know, like. Of course, we should. But, but not here. Should we sign out? Okay. See you guys later. See ya. Bye. That's what he just said. <laughs> okay, take them off, take them off.